grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us confess our sins. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children. And Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promise prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> A reading from 1 Thessalonians. Now, concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, and then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you all are children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to them and said, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to their ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground 
and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed, so I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I do not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I don't know about you, and maybe it was my vacation, but I'm breathing a bit easier these days. The election is over. Even though some of the results are still being contested, the ads, the emails, and the phone calls have mostly stopped assaulting my senses. And I'm finding room to breathe. There's news of good initial results from a vaccine that may protect us from COVID-19. Cases are still surging, and even a promising vaccine is still months away from widespread availability. But I'm feeling some hope, and I'm breathing just a little bit more freely. Concerns about racial justice have largely moved from the rawness of violent demonstrations to more serious dialogue and a meaningful examination of the steps we need to take to address these important issues. There's still a long way to go. And as long as there is brutality and injustice, there will be unrest. But still, as we listen to voices that have been silenced for too long, I'm able to release some of the tension that's been building inside me. And I pray that we will all be free to breathe again. I'm breathing a bit easier these days. But still there is one problem that causes my lungs to tighten up and my heart to race. And that is the division that continues to eat at our relationships. You must feel it too. Friendships have been severed. Families have become disconnected. Our nation has been torn apart. Even in the church, we've often taken to identifying ourselves as conservative Christians or progressive Christians, focusing more on the opinions that separate us than on the one Lord who holds us together in love, grace, and forgiveness. 
Jesus tells a parable in this morning's gospel. And in spite of its problematic language of masters and slaves, what strikes me most when I read it is the incredible generosity of the master and the painful wastefulness of one who fails to embrace and understand the master's goodness and joy. You see, a talent was an incredible sum of money, equivalent to 30 pounds of gold, or 20 years' wages. So even the slave who received one talent was given an amazing trust, a huge gift. The crisis of this parable is that the gift was squandered. It was buried in a hole. It was seen not as a blessing, but as a problem, a burden, a curse. And then I think of the great gift that we are in danger of squandering. God has given us each other to love, to support, to learn from, and to hold dear. Each of us, regardless of our political persuasion or our ideas about how to deal with the virus or our racial or sexual identities or our taste in music or our education or our wealth, each of us has been created in God's holy image being able to recognize that image of God in each other is a gift far greater than 30 pounds of gold or 100 years' wages. Because when we value each other and love each other, we meet our God. What child of God have you dismissed because of some meaningless label? What loved one have you avoided because their politics makes you uncomfortable? Who have we overlooked because of their financial status or age or addictions? Each time we do that, we're burying a precious treasure in a hole, and we are poorer for it. It leaves us in the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Our identity is not based on anything we achieve or argue about. It is based on only one thing. We have been forgiven, accepted, and loved by God for the sake of Jesus Christ, who was crucified for our salvation and who rose to grant us new life. Not only does God love and accept people with different views and backgrounds than my own, but God also wants to use them to bring me joy and to enrich my life. We've got to give ourselves the chance to see in one another the image of our Lord and Savior. We need to learn to breathe together again to breathe the spirit of life and love which God has given us to share. That doesn't mean we will always agree about everything. What a flat and boring world that would be. It doesn't mean we'll say the same, that we'll see the same solutions or even agree on the same problems. Different perspectives can be a blessing as we seek God's will together. What it does mean is that we recognize and celebrate that we are one body in Christ and we need the gift of each other to be fully ourselves. My wife Phyllis bakes bread. There's a multi-grain loaf we love. It's made with whole wheat flour and oats and flax seed and barley and a whole bunch of other ingredients. Each ingredient has its own characteristic. Each one provides its own flavor and nutrition. Some are soft, some are crunchy, some are nutty, 
Some are more bitter. But together they form one bread, richer and more delicious because of all the difference. It's no wonder the New Testament sometimes describes the church as a loaf of bread. God has baked us together. What a wasteful tragedy if we fail to appreciate that gift. St. Paul writes in today's reading from 1 Thessalonians, Therefore encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Elsewhere in Romans he writes, Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. And do not claim to be wiser than you are. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. We have been given such a treasure in each other. Build each other up. Rejoice and mourn with each other. There's plenty of each to share. Live in harmony, each of us bringing our own notes to that great hymn of God's love. And live peaceably with all. With all. That is God's gift to us. We must not squander it because it is the way that God welcomes us into the Spirit's joy. So whether your breathing comes easily these days, or with great labor, whether it shakes with laughter, or trembles with tears, let us all fill our lives with the breath of the Spirit. And let us discover and nurture the peace of God in each other. Together, let us breathe in the joy of our Master. Amen. Please stand as we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The response to each prayer petition when I say, Hear us, O God, is your mercy is great. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, on the world, and on all in need. Lord of the church, ignite your people with the passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations and refine us to participate in your activity throughout the world. We pray for Christ Episcopal Church and Father John, for St. Luke's Lutheran and Pastor Bill, for the West Berks Mission District Council and our staff, Dawn and Jane, for Trinity staff, Pastor Allen, Deaconess Deborah, Karen, Peter, Matt, Rachel, Dave, and D, and for common ground, Pastor Tom and Michael. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
Lord of creation, we stand in awe at the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature, for the colors of autumn, migrating birds, sparkling rivers and streams, harvested fields and all the abundance of your creation. Bless the earth for your glory and restore its integrity where exploitation has caused ruin. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of the nations, sound forth your justice in the ears of all leaders. Increase concern for those who are most vulnerable and let them not be forgotten during this time of government transition. Grant your wisdom to President-elect Biden and to all who have been elected or appointed to positions of leadership. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of all in need, search out those who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. Heal the sick. We pray especially for Annie, Karen, Larry, Dick, Daryl, Luther, Pete, Kate, Richard, David, Darlene, Claudia, Ashley, Christina, Gloria, Donna, Dan, and all who have been exposed to or infected by COVID-19. We pray that you encourage those who are homebound or residing in care facilities and uphold those who love them. We pray today for Joan, Sarah, Thelma, Joan, Betty, Carl, Ruth, Walter, and Tom. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of the stranger, stir up holy restlessness in us to extend love to those at the margins. Release our desire for control and open us to learn from the perspectives of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints at rest from their labors. Rouse us to live by their example that saints yet to come may also know your love. Bless the daily vocation of all Trinity members, especially David, Sherry, Tony, Allie, and Meg, Bill, Jill, Justin, and Alexandra, Mark, and Marlene, and Daniel. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Peace be, be with you. you. Be with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. 
pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against us. And and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table of the Lord as you are welcomed forward. They stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God, sovereign, savior, and spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God.